I'm curious to hear your stories about what pushed you to like enter this kind of new career, this new field. Well, certainly last year's elections in November made an impression. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, still, and, still impressing us. <laughs> for me, after the inauguration, I marched, I rallied, I organized an indivisible, I, with seven other women, we organized an indivisible group in my little red rural Clark County. Um, so the energy was there. We were all looking for ways to make change, right? But the first week of February, I went to a town hall where my local representative spoke. And I had never met him or heard him speak. And I listened to him for an hour and a half, went home and looked at his voting record and thought, oh, that's not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> With that amount, that shocked you. <laughs> Wait, you mean there are politicians who don't vote uh, or act the way that they say that they do in public? That's I think I've heard of this. I'm before. shocked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we get it. I'm naive. <laughs> But I thought, so I start started to just say, okay, so whoever's going to run against him, I'm going to work on that campaign. Yeah, yeah. And I went from, so my, my district spans three counties, and I went to the Democratic committees, and I said, okay, who's running against him? Because I'm here and ready to go to work. And they all said, no one's running, Wendy. I was, oh. <laughs> wow. And, and eventually it was like, Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I Did got into it. That's have... remarkable, though. <laughs> that, is, that really is remarkable. You know, you hear, you hear a lot about how dirty politics gets, how your life gets dragged through the campaign. And a lot of people, because of those reasons, stay out of the political process. Were you worried about that? Going okay, in? so in my 20s, I was an international level equestrian competitor in oh. the most dangerous equestrian sport. It's called three-day eventing. It's an Olympic sport. I was shortlisted for the for the United States equestrian team. After you faced that, those physical challenges and those physical fears, this didn't uh, seem too daunting. I see. <laughs> what about you, Elizabeth? How did you decide to enter the political fray? Well, um, my life, being a Latina in Prince William County, has been just a constant fight. Yeah. You know, I we have a leader as the chair of the county board of supervisors who portrays Latinos as criminals, gang members, people who come to this country to harm the country. And that it's like as Latino in Prince William County, you become resilient to it. It's like, okay, yeah, they're always going to look down at us. It was upsetting, but this at the same time, you look at your priorities, right? You have to work, you have to go to school, you raise your children, and you don't pay attention. It bothers you, but then at the same time, oh, well. But then I got involved with the Democratic Party as a volunteer since 2008 mm -hmm. when Obama came to Prince William County and did his awesome speech, fired up, ready to go. <laughs> so since that day, I grabbed my clipboard, and I've been knocking on doors trying to help uh, Democrats to get elected in Prince William County. But then uh, for the presidential election, I was a Bernie Sanders delegate when he was doing his speeches, talking about his parents coming from a different country, uh, looking for better opportunities for him and his siblings. I was like, that's my story. Yeah. When he was talking about those people having two jobs or three jobs to make ends meet, and I'm like, that's me. He's talking about my story. So I felt very energized by his message, and I became a delegate. I worked really hard to get him elected. I used my bilingual skills, calling Latinos in New Jersey, in California, just to get, it didn't work out, but one of the things uh, in his concession speech, note to the DNC, during the DNC convention, but to his delegates was, listen, um, we would, I would like for you guys to continue this revolution. I would like for you guys to run for office if necessary, because cha uh, changes happen at the local and at the state level. And we need to just con fight the right fight. So I immediately had flashbacks uh, of my life in Prince William County. And I said, maybe these things happen because we just don't have a voice. Yeah. Corey Stewart does this to us because we don't have no one who could have stood up and said enough. We are not that type of people. So I felt about my, ch I remember my children. I re and I'm like, I don't want my children to be raised in an environment where they have to feel different. They're Americans. 
So I declared in October uh-huh. and hoping that Hillary will win and we will have more opportunities, I mean, for women. And we, I work really hard, personal, to get her elected. The results didn't work out. But then the day after the election, and I try to keep my children, at least the young ones, my eight and nine year old, I don't want them to watch the news and listen to the negativity that it's uh, on TV, on radio. But they talk in school, right? Mm-hmm. They realize what is going on exactly. So my son comes after the Trump was elected. And he said, Mommy, we need to get out of this country. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, we speak Spanish. And mm. Trump doesn't like people who speak Spanish. And I'm like, oh, no. And I said, you know, I had to explain to him that he should be proud of speaking two languages. That yeah. that's a skill yeah. that he's going to enjoy when he grows up as a professional. And I'm like, yeah. no, I need to fight even harder. 